a killing. The killing of Shinzo Abe, perhaps the most successful assassination, the most successful political assassination of our time. Okay, with respect to like your political goals. You know what I mean? Like with respect to, to why you would engage in an assassination and like what happens in the aftermath of it. This is probably the most successful political assassination of our of our time, maybe even of all time. It would make it up there. Show today with breaking news out of Japan. Former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has died in the hospital. Investigation into the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Prime Minister's association with a religious group he blamed for his mother's financial ruin. The nation in shock the longest serving prime minister in Japanese history, assassinated while giving a public speech. Nothing like this has happened in the country since 1936, an event no one expected would ever happen again. What was first assumed to be a politically motivated attack was later clarified to be something else entirely. The man who pulled the trigger calmly shared his story. This was not about politics, instead it was about religion or what some would instead call a cult. The Unification Church. A young man blamed the organization for a ruined life. This young man grew, and so too did his hatred for those who he deemed responsible. And like, that's crazy. They literally, the Japanese people were shut up like, you know, hold up, hear him out though. Like, he killed the, he killed the former prime minister and the nation of Japan. The Japanese people were like, let him cook because he's kind of not wrong. Like, that's what they said. They literally were like, oh, I'm sorry. You want to pay fucking state funds for a funeral? Not on my watch, motherfucker. I've never seen that. That's insane. Until one day, he enacted his revenge. Shinzo Abe, born 21st of September 1954, was a polarizing figure throughout his long political career. A staunch conservative whom was often described by detractors or opponents as a right-wing Japanese nationalist. Despite I mean, he this, was. He managed to do what no other Japanese politician had done before him. Taking office first in 2006, Shinzo Abe resigned just a year later. I mean, it's, it's wild. That like people are like, oh, was Shinzo Abe right wing? It's like, bro, he is a war crime denier. Okay, people forget like Holocaust isn't the only place where war crimes happen. Okay, like Holocaust isn't the only place where genocides happen, even during World War II. Like th that, it doesn't get more fucking far right than that. You know what I mean? citing health concerns. In September of 2012, he made a return to the spotlight as the re-elected leader of the LDP party and defeated their opponent in a 108 to 89 vote to yet again become prime minister. He made many controversial statements throughout his time in office, including that of a revisionist history regarding Japanese war crimes in World War II, which caused tensions throughout the region with China and South Korea. Despite these and many other controversies surrounding his position and policy, Shinzo Abe as Prime Minister managed to beat out oppositions in two more elections, 2014 and 2017, before he elected to resign yet again in 2020 due to- His party is called the Liberal Democrats? Yes, Americans may be shocked to find out, but Lib Dems universally outside of the United States of America, with notable exceptions of course, are right wing. Liberal Democrats are right wing. Even if you look at like politics in general, if you look at the political spectrum in the United States of America and compare it to other countries, our liberal Democrats are right wing too. We don't have health care, man. That is like an unimaginably far right economic uh, policy position. Okay? To the relapse of those prior health concerns. Despite all the controversy, Shinzo Abe was loved by many within Japan. His legacy is that of complexity and division among all who followed his career. Somewhere along the way, however, Shinzo Abe is accused to have been involved in an organization that is perhaps more controversial than the peaks and valleys of his political career. Yeah, an organization that our CIA played a role in fucking putting in a position of power in Korea. 
In the modern world, a charismatic leader can spread their word and gain followers. This can be described in two different ways, depending on a few factors and your perspective on how that group operates. The first is a pejorative term, cult. The second is NRM, or New Religious Movement. The major difference between the two is how a member's recruited and treated, as well as with a cult often being more of a social movement versus a purely religious one. Which brings us to the- You mean Japan? No. South Korea. With connections to Japan as well. No, I'm talking, Co I'm talking Korea, motherfucker. No, we're talking about the Moonies. Okay? That, that is the, the Korean cult. The far-right Korean cult that we uh, uh, ha have played a role in. Okay? Building out. Now, that is also kind of similar or not dissimilar to the liberal democratic development in Japan. Okay? The irony is that, like, there is a connection between uh, the, the dude who was denying war crimes and comfort women, Shinzo Abe, denying his grandfather's war crimes specifically, right? And the Mooney cult. Both of those formations have Western involvement in them. The Unification Church and where that is classified between these two terms. Originally founded in 1954, South Korea by Sun Myung Moon, the Unification Church is a massive, multifaceted organization that has spread across the globe. Some of the cliff notes as to why some call this organization a cult stems from the original leader Moon and his claim to be the Messiah. Mm. He fervently believed that he was the second coming of Christ, and his followers were to not only believe this, but spread the word in hopes of recruiting more people to the church and his cause. Members of the Unification Church are often referred to as Moonies, named of course after their great leader, who is described within the Divine Principle texts as the one man sent by God to resolve the fundamental problems of human life and the universe. Now as to how this South Korean organization has anything to do with Shinzo Abe, Japan, and an assassination, all comes down to how exactly the Unification Church is funded. Around 70% of the church's funding comes from the nation of Japan, and particularly what they refer to as spiritual sales. Moonies will research the deaths of Japanese citizens and then travel door to door claiming to be in contact with the recently deceased loved ones of families they are targeting. The claim is that if the family does not give money to the church, the deceased will not find them. What PKK terror attack? PKK terror organization attack on France? What? Wasn't it like a far right French nationalist who attacked a bunch of Kurdish people? What are you fucking nuts? So even when Kurdish people are fucking attacked and are victims of hate crimes, they're still responsible and they're terrorists? Is that what you're saying? That's insane, bro. We're not going to talk about that right now, though. We're talking about something else. <laughs> Yo, the, he pulled a Megan the Stallion on the on the Kurds. He was like, you know, they are actually, uh, they are actually deserving and responsible for the hate crimes that they were, uh, they, they they you know suffered. Their way into heaven. Due to this and many other factors, the Unification Church, despite the name, is said to cause conflict and erosion of families. Followers are sometimes instructed to marry the church's choice or to give over so much money that it would jeopardize the safety and the stability of any- He might just be Turkish and fucked it up uh, uh, in, in translation, to be fair. Family involved. Due to the widespread operation of the Unification Church and the amount of funding they are able to procure, they have deep ties to many political organizations across the globe. What does the CIA get out of its connection with the Moonies? Hmm, I wonder what the CIA gets out of, uh, you know, uh, uh, pumping the stocks of a far-right ultra-nationalist religious sect that they can place in a position of power that then exert, that where they can exert authority and influence over an entire nation that is already under their control pretty much economically. Um... Oh yeah, that's right. They've done that literally universally all around the world. Anytime that they wanted to thwart like a fucking leftist formation in in some country, in any part of the world that they wanted to have a say over, they basically do this exact same thing. 
Falun Gong is the Chinese version of this, which is unsuccessful, of course, because Falun Gong is like, you know, I mean, because the Chinese government is way too fucking powerful uh, in comparison to a war-torn, absolutely fucking destroyed South Korea uh, in, at the time and place when, you know, uh, they were building out uh, the Moonies. and have been involved in policy, either publicly or privately, in many, many countries. After World War II, the first elected Prime Minister of Japan was a man by the name of Nobusuke Kishi. As Prime Minister, he assisted in bringing the Unification Church to Japan. Nobusuke Kishi had a son by the name of Shintaro Abe, who became Japan's Foreign Minister. He, of course, was also heavily involved with the church, and as you would have guessed, Shinzo Abe is the son and grandson of these two men. All three of them are alleged to have been at many of the services for the church for multiple decades, and they are not alone, as many other high-ranking Japanese politicians have been linked with the Unification Church and subsequently with the Moonies. This information, while known publicly, did not take any form of media centre stage or seem to be deemed a problem until July 8th of 2022, the day that Shinzo Abe was carrying out his duties at a political event outside a train station in Nara City. During his speech, a man with a homemade firearm walked up behind him and opened fire. The first shot missed. Shinzo Abe turned around to see what the noise was, and the second shot landed. The suspect was arrested immediately and taken for questioning, which is where he calmly revealed the reason for the day's events. Tetsuya Yamagami was born September 10th, 1980, in a privileged household. His grandfather on the maternal side owned a local construction company, which his parents of course helped to run, and the family was generally quite affluent in the area. Tragedy struck early in Tetsuya's <laughs> life. He said, motherfucker got taken out by a thingamabob. <laughs> it's true though. It's not even a blunderbuss, you know what I'm saying? That shit was like, I mean, that's crazy. How is his hairline so good for his age? First of all, you don't know that, okay? Especially Japanese people love doing the the the, the hiding the hairline thing sometimes, okay? It's a universal problem that all men face. Turks, Japanese people, people all around the fucking uh, uh, world. You just got caught because he just like pulls it in front. You have no idea how bad that shit looks if he pulled it back. life. In 1984, his father took his own life. As he grew up, he grew close to his uncle as a result. Everything progressed relatively normal from there, that is, until the death of his grandfather. This was when- th Bro got popped by a blicky madoodle. Stop. A whatchamacallit. I've never even heard of that. A blicky madoodle? Things started to really go wrong for the family and get out of control. Tetsuya's mother took over the construction company, but clearly struggled with the death of her father and her husband. In the 90s, to deal with the loss she'd suffered, Tetsuya's mother joined the Unification Church. She regularly attended gatherings, taking her three children with her as much as possible. Tetsuya, now a teenager, watched his mother donate every penny that the family had remaining, starting with around seven. These churches literally operate in a similar capacity to fucking casinos where they catch whales like this, okay? They cast as wide a net as possible, catch as many whales as possible, like this kid's, uh, like this dude's mom, okay? And then they milk him for whatever the fuck they got left. $120,000, which were all of their savings, followed by a parcel of land her father had left her, and even the house the mother and three children were living in. This caused the family to declare bankruptcy in 2002. The bankruptcy, however, didn't stop the mother grand, from bro, donating to the church. Tetsuya and his siblings were neglected to the point they regularly needed to contact their uncle to deliver them food, as their mother was too busy at the church and prioritized giving the money to them instead of buying food for her children. Due to this financial situation, Tetsuya had little option but to leave home without the education he longed for, as the family just had no money for him to go to college. As a result, he joined the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, where he was posted to Kyo Naval Base and the destroyer JS Matsuyuki. 
Three years later, in 2005, he attempted to take his own life so that his siblings could collect his life insurance policy. Things were just that bad. A few years later, his older brother was diagnosed with lymphoma, a disease he struggled with for many years, and of course couldn't resolve due to financial restraints for medical bills. This brother took his own life to escape the disease and financial burden in 2015. Tetsuya by this point blamed the misfortune of his entire life on the Unification Church and the Moonies. He researched the group with an obsession and planned to assassinate the leader. However, he discovered the Shinzo Abe connection and decided that his grudge was with the man who helped spread the church's influence in Japan, which ultimately consumed his mother and ruined his family's life. On July 7th, just one day before the attack, Tetsuya sent a letter to a blog editor who reported on problems experienced by children of religious cult believers. The letter reads, I once wrote to you that I want a gun so bad that a hand might as well come out of my throat to reach for one. Since then and now, I have devoted myself to procuring a gun. My Bro, that's crazy. Yo, bro wrote poetry, dude. Dude, it's like... Like, that is crazy. That's like... That's like an actual villain origin story. Like, God, our fucking... Dude, our shooters are so lame. Like, they have no fucking actual political targets. It's literally just straight up, like, relentless, unfiltered frustration and rage that they fucking have. And their manifestos are literally just copy-pasted 4chan poll memes, like, about white people getting replaced or whatever. This guy actually had, like, an anime villain arc where he was just, like... I mean, that's crazy. That's crazy. Devotion resembled that of the Unification Church followers who discard all but their entire life in the name of a false god. My fateful encounter with the Unification Church goes back about 30 years. My mother, since having entered the religion, wasted over a hundred million yen, our family's collapse, bankruptcy, as such things went by and my teenage years were over, it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that this experience continued to distort the rest of my entire life. While I did loathe Abe, he is not the primary enemy. He is no more than one sympathizer of the Unification Church, one who has great influence in the real world. This letter was discovered days after the assassination and later released to the Japanese media along with the story of Tetsuya Yamagami. With nothing left to lose and having accomplished part of his mission, the now 41-year-old man described his previous attempts to remove high-ranking members of the church from this mortal realm. From the time of bankruptcy over 20 years ago, he would walk the church halls with a knife, searching for the opportunity to find the South Korean leaders of the church. He made plans to burn another member with a Molotov cocktail in 2019, but had to give up due to the inability to access the church on that given day. He considered making homemade ex- Hand coming out of mouth is a saying in Japanese. I mean, that's a cool ass saying, bro. Someone said they made the villain too relatable. Yeah, dude, this guy has like, he is the genius of hard work, okay? He literally worked so fucking hard for this. Like, you know, half the fucking, half the mass shooters are just like, they're, they're, they're just, they're just like directing their frustration after like a store purchase gun that they fucking got a week prior on whoever the fuck they want to. You know what I mean? This guy was like letting it cook. Okay. This guy was sitting in the kitchen cooking, cooking up fucking schemes. Not even saying it's a scheme is like undermining what he was, uh, you know trying to do here. Explosives, but didn't want to harm innocent bystanders, instead electing to make homemade firearms. Tetsuya Yamagami spent the majority of his adult life searching for retribution. On July 8th, 2022, he enacted that vengeance. The government has begun an official investigation into the Unification Church. There have been months of revelations about links between the religious group and the government. Are we sympathizing with a killer? No, of course not. But also, having said that, um, you know, it's just, 
I'm just looking at the situation as objectively as I possibly can. Liberal Democratic Party. In the immediate aftermath of the event, there was panic and uncertainty. Politicians cancelled plans and campaign appearances out of respect as well as safety concerns. No one knew what else could happen or even why this had happened. It's not even like, uh, it's not even that like I'm sympathizing with the killer, the assassin in the situation, but it's more so that like he had a goal, okay? He very clearly defined his goal. He overcame great odds, okay? Many obstacles, many hurdles were cleared, okay? He built a fucking rust weapon, a blunderbuss, okay? Out of just tape, pretty much, right? And then ended up assassinating the longest, like, uh, leader in Japan, right? Other than, you know, emperors and shit. Who had done many awful things throughout his lifetime. But the reasoning for why he had assassinated him was because of his connections to a CIA-built, uh, psychotic, far-right, ultranationalist Korean church. And not only that, but he did what he did. And then the Japanese people literally fucking turned around and were like, actually, he's kind of right, though. Which is crazy. After Tetsuya Yamagami's questioning, the letters and his tweets were publicized, it raised more concerns and questions than if this was purely politically motivated. Questions were being asked by media, both foreign and domestic. How much of this was true and how deep did it run? Did the Unification Church have these political affiliations? And if they did, to what end? In a surprise, the Unification Church did confirm the story, though they left out key details. A representative confirmed the Yamagami family were part of the church for that period of time and that they donated money, but didn't confirm a dollar value. They also denied that Shinzo Abe was involved with them, just that he gave friendly speech. This is what a leftist terrorist is and is very much more dangerous than the right, but look how much suffering he had to sustain to get to this point and still didn't want to kill innocent people. That's crazy. Yeah. As for their affiliated organizations. Then there was infighting among the Moonies from Korea, with a statement released expressing guilt over the death of Shinzo Abe. A prominent leader of the Moonies claimed he wanted to reform the actions of the church in Japan, striking the practice of spiritual sales completely from the organization. I mean, it doesn't get more... Bro, it, it doesn't get more than that. You know what I mean? That's it. It... More dangerous? No, he means more dangerous. Like, this is why leftist radicals are more dangerous in the sense that their cause is just, is what he was trying to say. In a lot of instances, leftist uh, radicals are, are more dangerous as a consequence of their cause uh, reaching public support uh, relatively quickly because it is oftentimes hyper-focused on people who are vilified. You know what I mean? And, and more effective, I guess. And it was! It was so effective! That's why I'm saying this is perhaps the most effective political assassination of our time. Like, literally, he killed a fucking uh, long-term leader in Japan. We're looking at it from America, not really fully understanding the, uh, not fully grasping the situation. But, like, I've never seen an instance where, like, a fucking political leader gets assassinated. And then the public overall is like, I kind of see the points. I kind of understand why this guy did it. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, the other leaders were having none of it. They saw the massive financial benefit and they didn't want to let go. In fact, they went so far as to deny everything he said, instead claiming that the media discussing these topics were tantamount to hate speech and threats against their followers. Huh. Which is why they organized protests where they transported over 3,000 people from their career. I'm gonna be honest, that's not gonna work because, you know, uh, for reasons, ironically, that Shinzo Abe actually denied routinely, the uh, relationship between Japanese people and Korean people, not exactly great, okay? That certainly was a systemic form of bigotry that played a role in why this was a successful assassination. Because many people looked at this and went, why the fuck is the Japanese prime minister... The former Prime Minister of Japan, like, so invested in this fucking Korean church. Because, you know, let's be real. 
There's a lot of story there. There's a lot of background there. Not too fond. The Japanese people are not too fond of Korean people, vice versa, for understandable reasons, especially on the Korean side, even though this unification church is a far-right ultranationalist unification church, and I'm not, like, I'm not fucking, you know, uh, supporting them in any meaningful capacity. But you have to admit that uh, Japan's, like the overall Japanese uh, uh, attitude towards Korean people in general definitely also played a role in why this was a successful assassination. Korean facility right to the streets of Seoul to rally against Japanese media. Most of the participants in this rally were Japanese women who were married to Korean men through their arranged marriage system. As if that wasn't enough, they also started to sue Japanese media outlets or even talk show guests for defamation whenever they... And also, as we all know, in Japan, you can sue someone for defamation, even if they are truthful. Fun fact for everybody who doesn't know, let's say someone's a pedophile, okay? Let's say there's a pedophile in Japan, and someone goes on a media show and goes, that guy's a pedophile, okay? And I'm not talking like, you know, that guy watches uh, uh, lolly shit, which I think you should be able to call someone a pedo for that especially if they're being really weird around children okay i'm talking like straight up you say someone is like a convicted pedophile you say that on tv you can still get successfully sued in japan okay like straight up it's crazy okay that's a crazy thing wild he talked about the assassination potentially being linked to the unification church in Japan, on a political level, the leader of the LDP reshuffled his cabinet with the aim to closely examine each member for any affiliation to the Moonies, though only after massive percentage drop-offs in the party's approval ratings. On a civil level, reports and studies started a service that showed close to $40 million reported as damages from over 400 victims of the church from the year 2017 until 2020. The reason the lawyers reported this money as damages is that the victims claim to have been coerced into donating the money under false pretense. On October 16th, 2022, Japanese Prime Minister Kishida announced a probe which would assess the allegations against the Unification Church operation within the nation. Should any of this prove true, the organization would be officially dissolved within Japanese territory. Which brings us to the public's reaction. To some, Tetsuya Yamagami was deemed a hero, a fighter of freedom, and hailed as an icon. T-shirts were sold in his name. People like that that wasn't like a that's not a small percentage of people it wasn't like lol like we're riding for some fucking mass shooter like in in the way that like you know edge lords try to like 4chan tries to in america we're talking like a good chunk of japanese people saw what he did and we're like that was fire actually and valid okay but we're cosplaying as him on the day he actually performed the assassination movies were released detailing his life on the day of Shinzo Abe's funeral, petitions were filed to drastically reduce his sentence, and there was widespread <laughs> support for his actions. The issue here is doing so could cause others to try to resolve their own problems in life with those same radical methods. And that is how the most polarizing figure in recent Japanese politics was assassinated due to his alleged involvement in an organization that has solicited billions of dollars from grieving Japanese families. I mean, that shit was crazy, dude. That was crazy. That, that fucking happened. Wild. Absolutely fucking wild. They said, free the homie, he ain't do nothing. Yeah, I mean, no, they said, free the homie, he did something, but we agree with it. Which is, like, almost worse than saying, free the homie, he ain't do nothing. They were like, no, 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 we know what he did. We liked it. We would like more of that, please. That's what they were <laughs> fucking saying, dude. It's crazy!